Over the last several weeks, we have been in Matthew chapter 13, as Jesus describes the kingdom of God in a number of parables. We have the parable of the sower, and last week the parable of the wheat and the weeds. Today give, we hear now several small parables from Jesus. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 13th chapter. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but when it has grown, it becomes the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Jesus then asked, Have you understood all of this? And his disciples answered, Yes. Jesus said to them, Therefore every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. When Jesus had finished these parables, he left that place. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear friends, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So Jesus describes the kingdom of heaven in these short metaphors or short stories called parables. Today we are given several of these short parables about the kingdom. In one sense, we could say that God works in these rather small, hidden ways in order to bring the kingdom of God right here among us. God works in small ways that are often, we can see them in plain sight if we only have the eyes to see. So Jesus works under the radar, so to speak, to bring in the kingdom. And the goal, of course, for Jesus is to bring in God's rule or God's reign of peace and justice right here among us. Now in baseball there's a term called small ball. I've also heard it called smart ball. But in small ball the uh, goal is to methodically advance the runners forward to the base ahead of them. So you might start out with a bunt and then a stolen base, maybe a hit and run, a sacrifice fly. And the goal is to eventually bring a runner across home plate for a score. It's called small ball, as opposed to perhaps a home run. Well, small ball might be one way to describe how Jesus brings in the kingdom of God to us. It is the primary work of Jesus to bring in God's good kingdom into the world, into our lives. Now, God's kingdom in Matthew's gospel is called the kingdom of heaven, so we can use those two phrases interchangeably, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. So today, Jesus says, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed. 
Now actually a mustard seed is, is very, very tiny. If you were to take a pencil and just uh, make a dot on a piece of paper, that's the size of a mustard seed. Dick Ring brought one in to Tuesday morning men's Bible study. Just a little tiny dot of a thing. Now a mustard seed is actually an invasive plant. It's a weed. And it's curious how Jesus works even in something such as a weed to bring about the goodness of God's kingdom. Because that mustard seed grows up into a great big bush and in that bush birds of the air find a nest. They have a home. In God's kingdom, all creatures, great and small, need a place to hang a picture on the wall. All God's creatures need a place to call home. We think of foster children or homeless children. We think of the refugees that are living across the world in makeshift tents. It is God's purpose that every person on the planet have a place to call home. It's the coming of God's kingdom. Jesus also says that the kingdom of heaven is like a little yeast that is hidden in... Thank you, Louis. So, this little yeast is hidden in flour. And we know that yeast is actually a fungus. And it eats away at that flower, but even through this kind of corrupt germ, God brings about goodness. Because what happens? That yeast makes our bread light and fluffy. And can't you just smell the aroma of fresh baked bread right now? And some of that dough might be turned into fresh cinnamon rolls, like we had last week that Doug made for us. Or maybe uh, buttered biscuits with a little strawberry jam on it. You see, in the kingdom of God, it is God's will and God's purpose that all creatures on the earth have enough to eat, that no one goes hungry. That's how it works in the kingdom of God. Well, Jesus says that in the kingdom of God, it's like a person who goes out and finds treasure hidden in a field. And in their joy, that person goes and sells, gives up all that they have to go and buy that field so that they might obtain the treasure. Now, it sounds just a little bit dubious, doesn't it? But you see, even God can work through something such as that in order to bring the joy of the kingdom of God to us. A treasure hidden in a field. When I was about five or six years old, I was walking along a gravel road next to our school in the little town of Howard, South Dakota. And I was walking along, I glanced over in the ditch and hidden among the leaves in the ditch was a $5 bill. Now in 1957, a $5 bill was an awful lot of money. Well, you can imagine with joy and surprise, I ran home and I opened up the Sears catalog. <laughs> Lo and behold, two weeks later, a package arrived in the mail. And can you believe it? There was an entire Royal Canadian Mounted Police uniform. The red jacket with gold buttons, blue pants with gold stripes down the sides, and a, a smoky hat, you know, like a state trooper wears, a plastic whistle, and a little plastic gun. Dudley do right and me. <laughs> we brought justice to the Rockies of Canada. Well, there's joy in the kingdom of God. It's God's will and purpose to bring delight and surprise into our lives. Well, the kingdom of God is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. And when that merchant finds that one pearl of great value, what does the merchant do? He gives up, he sells all that he has to obtain that one pearl of great price. 
That's the way it is in the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is more valuable than anything else we can imagine. Just think about it. We pray for the kingdom of God to come, don't we? Every time we say the Lord's Prayer, we long for God's kingdom of justice and peace and well-being to come upon this earth. And so we long for the kingdom. But how do we love the Lord of the kingdom? Now, as Lutherans, we probably don't talk about loving Jesus too much, but it's essential to who we are. It's, it's in our beings if we just find ways to express. How do we love Jesus as the Lord loves us? It's something to think about, something to reflect upon as you go about life this week. I wonder what priorities we might need to rearrange or schedules that we might be encouraged to change in order to put the kingdom of God at the very top of all that we are and all that we do. What might we rearrange within our lives for the kingdom? An ancient church elder once said, Our hearts are restless, O God, until they find their rest in Thee. Our hearts are restless, O God, until they find their rest in Thee. Lord God, give us hearts with that kind of restless longing. Well, Jesus says on the day of judgment, it will be like fishing nets, about this high, and they can actually be hundreds of feet long. They're big drag nets, and they drag the sea. All kinds of fish of every shape and size and kind, everything is drawn in close to the Lord God. And then God sends the angels as the ones who sort out what is in that net and throwing out the old rubber boots and the old rubber tires, all that is evil, all the rubbish, all the things that break our hearts and make life painful, all that sorted out. And then what remains is that righteousness of God. And as we asked last week, who is our righteousness? Altogether, we got it last week. Starts with a J. <laughs> Jesus is our righteousness. We shine in the presence of the Son of God. But the parable also says that there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. And we wonder, who does the weeping and gnashing? Well, perhaps it's those who have just missed out on seeing the goodness of God's kingdom in everyday, ordinary life who've missed out, and now there is a sense of regret. A mustard seed, yeast, a buried treasure, a pearl, some of these things that are very ordinary, so many things that are hidden right in front of us in plain sight, all signs of the kingdom of God. Because you see, friends, every single day our Lord Jesus is busy bringing in God's kingdom right here among us. Last spring, a small group of terrorists stopped a bus in the Middle East. And they demanded that all the Christians get off the bus. And you know what they were going to do to those Christians. They were going to line them up and destroy them. But there were Muslims on the bus who refused to let the Christians identify themselves or get off the bus. You see, it was the Muslims who saved the Christians on that day. And it's a sign of God's kingdom. And I heard just a week ago about a fella, an older gentleman, he was trying to unload a couch or a sofa off the back of his pickup and he was struggling. And a couple teenage boys across the street hurried over and helped him unload that sofa. It's a sign of the kingdom of God. And we've had a lot of flooding on many areas of the country during the past few weeks. And we see neighbors coming out with rakes and shovels and chainsaws cutting down fallen trees. Neighbor helping neighbor. It's an ordinary thing, but it's a sign, you see, of the kingdom of God. And we have our own folk here who come 
in a wheelchair on Sunday morning who come with walkers and crutches and you know it's not easy for them. But you see, our sisters and brothers come here because God calls us together on the Lord's Sabbath day. It's a sign of the kingdom of God. And you've got a mom with a couple little kids and you know it's not easy to get the kids ready and to bring them here on the Lord's Sabbath or a single person who comes. And why do they come? Because the Lord calls us into this place on the Lord's Sabbath. We are a sign of the kingdom of God. So a smile, a tender word of mercy or encouragement, the things of God that are hidden among us in plain sight every single day, in our unexpected moments and unexpected places. Now just think of it for a moment. The Messiah, the Savior of the entire world, who's born to a couple of peasants in a backwater village in Palestine. We say, seriously, God? The king of the entire universe comes into the holy city of God, not on a white stallion with thousands of troops, but comes riding in on a donkey with a few people waving palm branches. And just think of it. God rescues and saves the entire planet through a man who's hanging in humiliation, dying on a cross. We say, really, God, is this how you work? Lepers and outcasts, the fallen and the disgraced, all these people who come into the presence of God in the kingdom. Mustard seeds and yeast and fish, a small piece of bread and a thimble full of wine, and lo and behold, we receive the very life of God that we might have God's life, forgiveness, and salvation at this humble table. It sounds foolish, it sounds improbable, but it is the very truth of God. So we pray, Lord, open our eyes, open our ears, open our hearts, that we might receive your love in these ordinary, unexpected, and yet remarkable gifts. Signs of God's good kingdom right here for us. The peace of God which surpasses our human understanding. Keep our hearts and minds firm in the faith of Jesus.